We've been talking about the, uh, the the mastering of the for the fiftieth anniversary, so um, <laughs> I don't know what they what what they took to do that, um, but it's been all washed. You know, everything's like a, washed. They did some kind of remastering. Yeah. I don't know what that's about, but when you master something, you can duck yeah. stuff out. And, yes, you can. You know, they try to make it a guitar album and. It wasn't a guitar album, I and mean, we had guitar players, but it wasn't a guitar album, it was a band album. Of course. So, it, it's, uh, so if you were going to have, like, if you were to remaster Layla, what would you do? Go back to the original mix. Yeah. Go back to the original mix and uh, master it the way it was originally done. Yeah. You know, so you'd have a clean present master now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't spend that kind of money. I wouldn't get it. I don't recommend it. It'd be it. nice I, I to mean, have it was, the original. It was pretty one. amazing that, uh, how they pull, I mean, the drums, the bass, uh, everything, uh, uh, all the keyboard stuff. It was like I was a side man, you know. It was way down in there, you know. You don't hear any of it. I mean, Carl and Jim and I are grooving, but all, there's all those guitars are out in the front. And it was a mistake pushing Dwayne up out in the front because he was playing out of tune throughout the whole damn album. Well, how do you think that Carl would feel about this record now? I don't think he would like it either. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I wasn't impressed uh, by the sound of it at all. I, I, I like the packaging and all that stuff. And they wrote yeah, a nice thing in there. And they included you. I'm, I'm happy about that in the book. You know, and... Uh, uh, the well, thing about Derek Trucks in there, I don't know what that meant. What he was doing, him and his daddy was doing in, in our box set. <laughs> they didn't run it by me. They, you know, and I was one of the producers, but the, we weren't considered. You know, this is a... Well, you know, this was the last go-round, so... Yeah, well, you know, too bad in the last here. Fandango, they missed the, the pinata completely. <laughs> the pinata. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they completely missed it, you know. Uh, go go online and get the original uh, Derek and the Dominoes, and you hear what it really sounds like, you know. And uh, well, compared to the twentieth anniversary box set, what would you say the difference is? <laughs> well, they didn't do what on the twentieth anniversary. It was you know there was some thought went in into it. Well, this they one they just shoved it in there at EMI, you know. App, uh, Apple, uh, 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 where we recorded uh, all things, and um, pushed it in there with this new mixing technique that they can just suck all the life out of it and shove all the guitars up in your face, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy, you know. I'm sure, I've said this before, but I'm sure Tom Dowd would roll over in his grave, you know, if there was, that was possible you know but uh no uh -uh, uh -uh. Well, some people were saying they really hated the way tom dowd mixed the record in the first yeah place. well see uh, tom dowd wasn't a, a mixer like he, he a, a producer like uh, of your standard mode he i mean we're talking about the, the greatest uh of his ray charles you know we're talking about somebody that did ray charles and the almond brothers you know uh derrick and the dominoes it was real raw no fancy anything just push it up like that, you know, just get it to blend right. So he was he was great at doing what he did, you know. Um, he was perfect producer for uh, Derek and the Dominoes. And his mix of the, of the original album was phenomenal. You know, there are textures and tones and things that, that Jim Gordon did in there, little movements and little ding-ding bells and all sorts of, you know, ma making his drums talk that's in there, where he's playing Tablas on I Am Yours, you know. Robbie Shankar's uh, percussionist gave them to him. He sat down and... <laughs> and he also used it on uh, a Bell Bottom Blues, you know, on that backward snare. <laughs> and, uh, backward pretty, pretty snare? Did they go backwards with the snare on there? No, well, he, he played on the one. Oh, okay. That's Bell right. Bottom Blues... Instead of da 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 da, yeah right. Dun, you know, uh, but he played that part on the one. So what and, did and the, yeah sorry. It's all these real fine things that was done 
that just really made it, you know, they're so special, you don't even notice them, you feel them, you know, and it's percussion stuff that he did, mm -hmm. and the blend of, of our instruments, we were all working together, so the blend of, of the organ and all that with the guitars, it was just perfect, just perfect in there, and uh, oh, it's far from that now, you know. Well, when you hear our record, just believe it, you're going to have plenty of organ on there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, our record. Awesome. So I was going to ask you, uh, what did Albie Gluten play on? How did that happen? That he, he played, well, see, they kept pushing to get uh, somebody else in there to play keyboards as well. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm a real basic player, you know. But he wanted to they're pushing on. I said, I'm, this is a band. We're not side men. I'm not a side man. And we're, I'm a producer of this thing. Eric and I and Jim and Carl are the producers of this record. And don't want Albie Gluten. Don't need Albie Gluten. And he played on uh, It's Too Late, She's Gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, in protest, I pushed the volume wide up, all the way to the floor and hit the Leslie on and let, let it spin the whole, <laughs> the whole time. You know, and I made sure that the piano was down in there because it wasn't adding to the track. It was just in the way. Well, were the other guys into having Albie Gluten play? No. No, this was a that Tom was... Dowd power trip. Oh. You know, and, and they could have, he tried to come out there when we first got there. I mean, we'd just come out from playing on the road and stuff, you know, and we, we had all these songs down pat. He came out there with a chord chart for me and Eric. He <laughs> said, here you go, fellas. Uh, oh, chord chart. What the hell is this? You know? <laughs> then he came back with some other number chart, some other nonsense. I said, we don't do this. And I, I, I told Eric, I said, we're going to have to have a little powwow, you know. And uh, he's going to have to stay behind the glass and not come back out here again with a bunch of nonsense like that. Let him get back there behind the glass. Keep the tape rolling at all times, whoever comes in. It was my idea. Uh, whoever comes in, whether it's you or me or whoever, you know, just start it. It's only tape, you know. And, and uh, so I talked. He said, well, you're going to go tell him. He said, you know him from... Oh, Eric said that to you. Yeah, he said, you go tell him. Uh, he said, because you know him uh, from uh, all the way back in Stax days. I said, all right, I don't have a problem telling him. And I went and I said, hey, Tom, Eric and I just had a powwow. You stay in the control room. Don't come back out into the studio again. You stay in the control room and make sure the tape is running at all times. You guys do this back here. Leave us alone out there. We're the producers of this record. We, we wrote the songs. We've been playing it. We already know how Bell Bottom Blues goes, you know. Right. I looked away. We know how that goes. You know, we wrote the songs. And he didn't come back out into the uh, uh, studio area again until uh, uh, Thorn Tree in the Garden. Then he walked out and adjusted the mic one time. Just moved the mic that far. How did he feel about being told to stay? He out? respected it. I mean, he was going to try to come out there and orchestrate us. We were, we didn't, we were already orchestrated, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's true. That's an absolute, bona fide, real, true story, you know. And uh, it, it stayed that way. So my, my guess is that pretty much Carl and, and Jim Gordon stayed kind of quiet. They didn't say shit. <laughs> huh? They didn't say nothing. Uh, it did was you Eric's and Carl, in my band. Did you and Carl ever talk about anything while you were, you know, recording the record? No. Ever nothing? No, no. He did his job. See, we, uh, uh, me and Carl and uh, Jim Gordon have been playing together for quite some time, you know, with Delaney and Bonnie and friends. We'd already been together a couple of years. Right. So we didn't, we knew what we were doing, what we were doing anyway. You know, we knew what to do. You know, that band, I'd already played those songs, ex with the exception of, of Keep On Growing, and I wrote that on the spot. But, uh, Eric, it was a jam, and I put lyrics and everything to it. But, uh, no, we already had the songs written. You know, we just didn't know how this album was going to come together. We had everything. We had other songs, you know, uh, uh, Roll It Over and stuff that was all ready for, uh, to, to be recorded, but... It, when Dwayne and it came along, it changed the complexion of everything, how everything was going down. 
<laughs> which I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, we, we were really digging it and tried to get him in our band, you know, thought it could fit. Right. You know, well, we thought wrong. You know, uh, he had a different way of, of doing things. Right. I just, I don't think it would have fit. No, uh-uh. We tried it twice and it just didn't work, you know, because uh, I've talked about it before. You know, they played in a box and we were a sophisticated rock and roll band and we were nowhere near a box, you know. Well, I was going to ask you, were there any songs that you had written that never got recorded? Well, Roll It Over, and um, I don't even know what, what else. There, there was a couple of other ones. Well, you you Got to Get Better in a Little While. You know, uh, those things had happened, you know. But uh, we just didn't ha- have room, you know. We weren't planning on doing a double album. We were planning on just going in and cutting a single-disc record and... It turned out differently, you know. Well, were you happy that it turned out to be a double album? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun and, and uh, taking all the pictures and everything. And uh, I, was, uh, I'm, I, I took all the photos on the fold-out uh, that I'm not in, all right? Uh, uh, I, 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 I took all, Except all for the me one and Robin Turner. Except for the one where Eric is laying on your shoulder, didn't you take that? That's, 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 that's a That's a selfie. And that was probably one of the first selfies <laughs> where he, he was wore out, you know. But uh, it was it was great fun well, do, I, I, doing that record. But we were all very serious about what we were doing. Sure. You know? I did want to mention that uh, you and Eric actually started a song called "Dear Veronica." Yeah, yeah, Can and you, that was happened? that was our last song to write. He asked me uh, in the li- in the doorway of the living room, and he he said he said, uh, "Do you know who Veronica Lake is?" And I went. No, I don't think. He said, she's an old uh, uh, Hollywood actress with long blonde hair. And I said, and she didn't move her mouth. That's who that was. I remember. She didn't move her mouth. He said, that's her. And he said, uh, he played me, just standing there, played me. He went, dear Veronica, someone somewhere still loves you. Someone somewhere still cares. And Veronica, and I was like, "That's beautiful!" Wow, that's just amazing. And something happened. I don't remember what it was. We never got to it, you know. Uh, he said, we'll, "We'll we'll we'll do this. We'll finish this one." And it's just something happened, and we never really got to it. And uh, just one of those things, you know. It was just there's a couple of instances like that that. Things happened like that, and uh, uh, it never came to light until many, many, many years later, and uh, I finished it in, in the living room in Nashville. We recorded uh, it with Willie. Yeah, we <laughs> recorded it with Willie, Willie Nelson, and he's playing the most incredible guitar on it, just beautiful. And, and but the did, record was stolen from us, so... Oh, that's all right. It, it's, <laughs> it just moved from one place to the other. And you can't take anything from us. What I'm saying you is know? you can't hear it, because yeah, we don't have it. It'll, it'll be available soon enough. I'm certain of that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't take anything from us. Nobody can steal anything from us. You know, we're, we're, they can't do it. It's impossible. To, you know, you can't steal that. You know, it'd be like trying to take art. You can't take the art, hmm. you know. That physical thing, you might move that, but the art, you, you can't you can't take that from me. I got that in my head, you know. Uh, oh, I got all those songs in that Willie Nelson solo, everything. I got all that. Might, a person might have the physical thing, but he doesn't have, he doesn't have it, you know. So it won't do him any good, you know. People that do that, think that they can take from you. And they think they're actually getting something. They might steal your car, your guitar, or something. You know, the um, they can't do that. All they're doing is getting an object because what you have, that's a part of, of your being. That's who you are. Those songs are, are are mine. You know, those paintings are mine. You know, the all of that was mine. The possession of it was, but when that was taken. All that was was a, that material object was gone out of view and, and out of touch. That's all right. I've seen it and touched it enough. I created it, 
you know. I created it, so you can't take the creation from me, you know. I'm the heart and soul of that. All you can do is remove the object. Now, odds are that karmic wheel is going to come back and get your ass big time, you know, just by not doing anything, just by hands off, you know. It might be, it might be 10 years, it might be 20, 100 years from now, but all that stuff, all that stuff comes back around. That's just how I see it. That's how you see it? Yeah. 